Hey, what's up everyone, Kevin here. In this video, I wanna share with you some special things you need to know for setting up your step-on bindings. So I think I've got everything here. I've got the step-ons, the boots, um, all the hardware you need, and also two different Phillips head screwdrivers. So just the regular one you would use for setting up your bindings, but also a more narrow Phillips head screwdriver as well. So there's some special things for sure when setting up the step-ons. First of all, you do get two different set, sets of screws. So this is for your traditional four hole disc setup. And then you also have these black screws. So if you have the EST system, you'd be using the black screws. But so for me, I'm gonna be using these silver screws because I'm gonna be attaching it to my K2 excavator POW snowboard. Another special thing with the discs is that the Burton discs definitely have some extra holes going on. So you've got these like middle holes. So if you have EST, but then you also have the traditional four hole areas as well. So one thing that I wasn't sure about is which one was going to be the left foot and which one is the right foot. So the easy way to tell which binding should be on which side is that the clip in piece that is further forward, I think is supposed to be on the inside. So if you look at the right binding as well, this clip on piece is further forward and I think those are supposed to be on the inside. So that's the first thing to know. Okay, so next I'll get some of these silver screws out. I'll get four ready. This is kind of like handy to have this little um, holder thing. So for my front foot, I'm gonna go with a directional stance. I'm gonna go plus 18, setting it up in the reference holes. But one thing I already no noticed is that the little teeth that hold the disc in, it fits in like super well, kind of like a puzzle piece. I really like that. It just feels like it's being held in there really securely and firmly. And all the numbers and arrows are really just clearly laid out as well. So there's no like guesswork in what angles you're setting up. So here are the four reference holes for the back foot. I'm gonna do negative nine. And yeah, super easy to line that up. It fits in like a puzzle piece using the silver screws. Yeah, so, so far really impressed with the disc that comes with the step-ons. The next thing to adjust is this toe ramp. So this footbed, it's nice and soft, but it's really adjustable. And there's actually boot sizes that you're supposed to adjust it to. So from eight and a half to 10. So my boot size is nine and a half. So I need to set the footbed to nine and a half. Right now this footbed is just set to eight and a half. So I'm gonna push it forward. So the footbed moves forward or this toe ramp and now I can click it in to nine and a half. And you need to do this because you want the bottom of your boot to be in contact with the footbed of the binding. I think that puts the proper amount of like pressure on your boot so that it stays in contact with the step in binding. I'll do that for the other side as well. So you can see here they have these little teeth and then the teeth will match up to your boot size right here. So this is actually super easy to adjust. Just line it up with the nine and a half for myself, click it in, and that's gonna be the right size for my boot. So the next thing I'm gonna adjust, and this is kind of like a secret thing, is these outside levers. So everyone's been telling me that it's much easier to release the lever if it's on the inside of the binding. So this is kind of like a secret thing. If, if Burton can let me know if I'm not supposed to be doing this, let me know. So I'm gonna quickly do that. I think there's only like two screws I need to release. I really don't wanna lose these guys. All right. And then, but the high back actually wants to stay in the same place. So you just pinch the high back. That one stays on the left. This is now gonna go to the right so it can be on the inside. So to me, this makes a lot of sense because if I'm gonna reach down and pull a lever, I think it's much easier to do if it's on the inside. Reaching all the way back towards the outside, I know it doesn't seem like that big of a deal, but if I'm gonna be doing this 20, 30 times every time I go snowboarding, I might as well be in the best and easiest place to reach. So it looks like Burton has actually put some like lock tight um, glue on the screw. So I might actually pick some of that up and put some of that on after so these screws don't come loose again. So I'm gonna keep this on this side and then move this guy over here. 
All right, so now this should just click back in, just pinch it. That goes in there. All right, this is back together, back in place. So now the lever's on the inside. So all this is going back together really easy. I think this small like adjustment, just doing this once and then having it on the inside from now on is gonna be huge. It's just gonna make the whole system that much better. So even though these weren't originally together, this you just pinch it, it goes together like that. This goes back on. I think you can do this whole thing in like less than five minutes. And the Union screwdriver works really well with Burton bindings. <laughs> so now these levers are on the inside. I think this is gonna make it so much easier. So for when I click in, click in the other side too. So if I wanna get out, I think reaching on the inside is gonna make yeah, things so much, so much easier. Booyah. So there's one more thing to adjust. This is really important, um, adjusting the high back. And it's important to adjust your high back because right now it's as straight up and down as possible. But for your heel edge and having like a really active heel turn, the more forward lean you adjust, so the more forward you can put your high back, the quicker and more responsive your heel edge is gonna be. So that's, in my opinion, that's really important. So, but the one flaw I think with these bindings or a flaw that I can see so far is that you do need to have like a skinny Phillips head screwdriver to adjust this. And this really isn't that ideal because if you're up on the mountain, you're never gonna have like this skinny Phillips head unless you bring it up yourself. So for most people, you're gonna get stuck with your high back set to zero. So this is the adjustment points here. And you can see that little hole there. So it's not ideal to have that. So right now this is like flush. And I think what's gonna happen is this like gap is gonna open as I adjust it more forward. So you can see right here, there's a, you can see the screw, you can see an F2. And I'm sure if I continue to go, see how far this will actually go. F3, I can see F3 coming. And I think that's maxed out. So there's the screw that gives you the high back forward lean. So we'll do it on the other screw as well. So you can see it right there, like starting to come through. So that's maxed. In my opinion, this is not like the ideal way to be adjusting forward lean, but if you adjust it at home once, then you'll get it over with. If you can find one of these more skinny Phillips head screwdrivers, then you can adjust that. So on the mountain, you'll definitely find like fatter screwdrivers like this and it's not very common to get the skinny one. But if you go into a rental place on the mountain, then maybe they can help you out too if you need to adjust this. So I'm gonna quickly do the other side as well and there's, yeah, these two screws. So I do like to have a decent amount of forward lean. It just makes my heel turns and heel edge that much more active and responsive because usually our toe turns, especially for carving, like toe turns or toe carves are like no problem, but then the heel carve you can get some chatter, but if you set your forward lean forward, it's gonna help to correct all that and make like your heel turn that much more aggressive. All right, so we have maxed it out, screwdriver's stuck. Usually you can adjust forward lean more than from zero to three. Usually you can go from zero to six, but three is like a decent amount. So yeah, I got the bindings attached using the disc and the four silver screws. So I think this is like a really good system. You can even move your binding forward and backward a little bit depending on your toe or heel drag. So I really like that. And then the footbed is adjusted to my boot size. That's really cool. Uh, move the release levers to the inside. I think that's gonna be uh, much easier to do. And then the forward lean here is set as far forward as it'll go. So I think this is pretty much everything you need to do for the step on bindings. If you guys just got step on bindings and are setting yours up, uh, let me know if this video helped you out. If there's something I missed guys, let me know down in the comments. I'll also put some links to the step on bindings in the description if you guys wanna check these guys out. And if you like this video, make sure to subscribe here to Snowboard Pro Camp. Thank you guys for watching. Have fun out there snowboarding and I'll catch you in the next video soon. All right, we need to go test these out now.